Hello, Dan Jackson here, AKA Dan's the Engineer, business coach to tradesmen and small business owners. And I am in Surrey. I'm originally from Surrey. I've been around the world. I'm back in the UK for a short time. I'll be off again soon, but I'm back in my home place, in my birthplace in Surrey. So this video, we're gonna be talking about, do you test and do an EICR before a fusebore change or do you just test afterwards? It's a question I get all the time. I don't usually do technical videos at all, but I get so many people asking me this question and I mainly deal with business owners who mainly are electrical contractors, um, but not limited to. And my job is to coach people to get the best out of their business, make sure efficiency is as good as it could, productivity, and so we can make more money and do things eth ethically. And I, I guide people, I'm a contractor by trade, I'm an electrician by trade, I've had a, a company, so I've got vast experience. But so that's why I can relate to electrical contractors more so than most others. And I feel that this particular topic is kind of business related because if you're an electrician, you come across this all the time. And my job is ultimately also to advise people how to keep them out of jail, making sure they're meeting legislation and stopping any fines and making sure that their businesses are doing things correctly and we've got procedures in place. So let's go. Here's the age old thing. Do you do an EICR? before you change a board or do you just change it and you do a test afterwards? They're the two different things that, you know, that people generally talk about and there's always discussions. So I'm gonna tell you the truth. Do you test before or do you test afterwards? You do both. You carry out tests before and you carry out tests afterwards because beforehand you're assessing the existing installation to make sure are there any defects or any code one or code two items to make sure that when you change it, that it is safe because you, you shouldn't be energizing anything that isn't safe. And when you test afterwards, but it's because you're actually changing the design, you're altering, it's a major alteration. It's not like just taking a socket off and putting it back on. It's a big alteration when you're introducing RCD protection, now SPDs, and you know everything else you might be changing circuit breakers so they're the more modern types because there might be old rewirable fuses it might be the old type twos or you know something like that so it's a major alteration to the existing installation so we need to test before and we need to test afterwards now there's all sorts of guidance on this um, i believe it, there's an esf uh, best practice guide i'll put it in a link below have a read of it, it kind of makes sense, but regardless, even if you're chain, even if you don't do an EICR first, you, it still says you have to do and do a visual to make sure that there's no um, defects. You have to make sure you do tests like earth continuity, uh, polarity, insulation resistance. Now, everything I'm describing sounds like an EICR, so why aren't we doing it in the first place anyway? And you know, but ultimately it comes down to, is a client willing to pay for that? So I'm gonna sort of talk you through a bit of a process and how I used to tackle it with clients. So I used to say to clients who used to come to me, they say, I want my fuse board changed. And the first thing I say is, why? Why do you think that? And it might be, well, I had an electrician around the other day and he said he thinks it needs changing. I'm like, okay. And I often get them to send me a photo first of all. Now I always say to them that it's not a case of taking a fuse board off the wall taking it off, putting a new one back on and connecting it up. It's, it's not like that. The reason I used to say that is because regulations change over time, the standards change. We've got obviously the 18th edition now. And obviously when it was installed, they were a different standard, so we have to work to today's standard. But also, fuse boards don't get changed that often, so it's quite likely that we might have a few issues with the installation. And ultimately, if I'm re-energizing a circuit, I need to make sure that it is safe and suitable to turn on. Because ultimately, if there's an issue, if somebody gets an electric shock, there's documentation to say that I've been here, I've changed the board, did I check that circuit was safe? No. Why not? Because ultimately, I'm not doing everything I can to meet the electricity or work regulations. Now, a lot of electricians fail to forget that the electricity or work regulations are statutory, it's legislation, and forget BS 7671, that's, we say it's guidance, we should work from it. Electricity or work regulations, is the law and you have to make sure you do everything you possibly can to make sure that the work you're doing doesn't cause risk for electric shock, fires, anything like that. So that's, you always have to bear that in mind. So if you were standing in court, did you do everything you possibly can to stop somebody getting hurt? 
Now, if you change a fuse board and you didn't check that circuit, you don't know what's on it, didn't check it at all, you turn it on, month later, someone gets a shock, they dies, guess what's gonna happen? The paper trace will come back to you, they're gonna look at you and be like, well, hang on a second, you change a fuse board, what did you do with this circuit? And, it, and if you turn around and say, well, I didn't install the circuit, I'm just changing a fuse board. There's guidances, there's documents, and everything out there that suggests that you should be changing that first of all. You should be checking to make sure that it's all suitable and adequate and okay. So when you've got an expert witness or somebody, a, a professional in the business and they turn around and they'll say, well, hang on a second, you didn't do your job properly, you should have checked this. It falls on you and you are responsible. So everything we're doing, when, we, when we're working with electrics, when we're working with fire, everything we touch, everything we do, we need to remember, we're, we're making sure that we're keeping people safe, we're st prevent doing everything we can to prevent fires, uh, electric shock risk, and people getting injured, or worse, death. We're doing absolutely we, everything we can, okay? You, you, that's the thing you have to remember all the time. Everything you touch, are we doing everything we possibly can? You've got the cost element because you might do an EICR and the client will say, well, hang on a second, I've got two other quotes and none of them are suggesting an EICR. Now, the truth is they're probably not doing things properly. And the sad thing is that us electricians are in a pool and you know a group of people that are called electricians as well who do these short courses. They don't really know what they're doing. Anybody can have a stab at electrics. It's quite easy to get into. So unfortunately, we are dealing with those people and it does ruin the market ultimately. We'll talk about this another time. But anyway, forget them. You need to make sure you're doing everything that you do because if you just go, well, you know, five other people say this and say that's okay, it doesn't keep you out of jail and it doesn't stop people getting electric shock. You just need to concentrate on you and what you do. And if a client isn't the type to kind of, you know, understand why, then I wouldn't be wanting to work for those clients, but it's important to educate yourself on why we do this. But what we want to know is to make sure that the earthing and bonding is accurate and correct. Um, it's really important to reduce any, any risk there, but also to make sure that we, we've not got any um, horrible, you know, anything horrible that we can't see. There might be a socket somewhere that isn't earthed. It could be anything. It could be some light fittings are connected up that aren't in the right manner. So, you know, and, you need to highlight this to the homeowner, to your client, and say, surely we're better off knowing everything beforehand. Obviously, it saves time and aggravation. For this, I used to actually offer uh, EICRs for a bit of a lower rate than normal because the way I looked at it was like it was a survey and it helps me, it helps the client, it helps everybody. So I used to do it as a, as a little bit of a, a reduced rate to kind of get the foot in the door to get this nice report that we've got all the information, so I am confident when we connect the board back up, we've got to redo our tests, do our testing to verify, and everything's A-OK, -okay, everything's good. Because don't forget, obviously, you can't do an EICR first and not test afterwards anyway, because we've got additional tests we have to do, um, RCDs, but you might extend the cable slightly. You've got to make sure that the you know, earth continuity, because it, it might be the, um, you know, you might have to join um, some cables, so you want to be sure that everything's okay, um, the resistances haven't increased, the impedance has, hasn't increased, so you obviously have to test, but once you've got the, the test results beforehand, at least you've got, you know, something to base yourself against and, and verify to make sure, because you know what um, results you're actually looking for, and it's quite quick and easy, because you've already tested it once, it's just a case of whizzing around the house and, and doing the thing again. You've already done your, your points and checked that everything's, you know, how many things are on a circuit. So you've, you've done most of it already. It's just verifying and, you know, recording the additional results because they will change slightly, generally speaking. I hear all too often, and I see it on all the Facebook groups, you know, we all know what they're like, of people who have changed a fuse board and they haven't put test results down and they say, well, you know, I didn't install them cables and them circuits, but unfortunately you have to be responsible and make sure that what you're connecting up, you know, is safe before you turn it on. It's, it's quite a simple process. You can't get a, like an, an electrical installation certificate isn't a condition report and saying, you know, this doesn't meet regulations. So there's no bonding. So I'm just going to put a cross. 
you're actually certificating what you have done and what you've installed. That's what the, that's the difference between a certificate and a report. A report is on existing, a certificate is stuff that you've done and installed or modified or, or anything else. And I'm finding so many people are sending me messages saying that they found an electrician who's basically changed a fuse board and they've been called into a fault or something like that. And they found that they, they haven't done things properly. They have, you know, there's so many defects, code one and code two defects on the existing installation. And the customer thinks that they've got a nice safe installation. They haven't. Um, just because you change a board, don't get me wrong, it improves safety, but it doesn't mean it meets BS7671. So one Facebook group, which I think you should join, it's a great group, is the Sparky Ninja Facebook group. It's a great group great bunch of guys in there. There's a lot of help and advice there. So check that out. Now, obviously feel free to share this video amongst fellow electricians. Some people will not agree with me, but unfortunately I'm just saying things from you know my perspective and sort of advising on how we should do things instead of what people do do. You know, there's, there are two massive different things here. I hope you like this video. I hope it was helpful. I'll see you on another video.